Guys, today we are tackling probably the number one issue that I get emailed about, tweeted about, YouTube commented about, whatever, and that is procrastination. So here's the deal. For me, procrastination is one of my biggest productivity struggles, but it really only rears its ugly head at one step in the process, and that's at the beginning of a task. Because when I'm looking at a task after I planned it out and I'm basically like staring at a blank screen with a blinking cursor, there's this initial mental resistance to getting into the task. And once I can get over it, I can get into that flow state and work really, really intensely for a long period of time. The problem is getting over that mental resistance is pretty tough and more often than not, I'll go do something easier like check my email or look at Facebook or really anything else. Now I'd say it's pretty likely that you struggle with this problem as well. So today we are gonna go over my number one technique for getting over this problem, which is called the Pomodoro technique. Now it would not surprise me if you've heard of this technique before because a lot of people have talked about it and I'm honestly surprised I haven't done a video about it yet. But in case you haven't, we're gonna talk exactly about how you can use this technique but we're also going to talk about how you can improve it and I'm going to link you to some apps and other tools that you can use to augment it as well. So to start this out, here is exactly how to put the Pomodoro technique into action. Step number one, you pick one particular task that you need to work on. Not a list of tasks, not multiple tasks, just one. Once you've decided on it, set a timer for 25 minutes. Once that timer starts, work as intensely as you can on that one task for the entire 25 minute duration. And crucially, if something happens to distract you during that time, whether it's a call or a text from a friend, or whether you get really curious about how much a great white shark weighs, write that distraction down on a piece of paper and save it for later. Lastly, once that timer goes off, you take a five minute mini break and then you repeat that process three more times. After you've done four Pomodoro sessions, then you take a longer break and then if you want, you can start the process all over again. This technique is admittedly very simple, but it's also incredibly powerful. And I find it more powerful than almost anything else for getting me over my procrastination tendencies. And the reasons it works are threefold in my mind. Number one, it externalizes the discipline aspect of how long you're supposed to work by using a timer. As the author Robert Cialdini points out in his book, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion, humans have a strong drive to act consistently with their decisions. And that drive becomes even more powerful if there is a public or concrete commitment to those decisions like writing them down or using a timer. So if you take nothing else away from this video, make sure that you actually do use a timer when you're using this technique. It'll allow you to take advantage of those commitment benefits and from personal experience, I know that when I get lazy and tell myself I'll just mentally keep track of the time, I always end up more distracted and less productive than when I do use a timer. Another benefit of the Pomodoro technique is it reframes your task in terms of input rather than output. And this might seem like a subtle difference, but it really helps you get over that mental resistance to starting, which as we said, was the main cause of procrastination. And it does this because it narrows the scope of your task and it sets a hard fixed end time. So when you have an output based task, like write a paper or write a script on the Pomodoro technique, there's some end in mind, but you know that you have to get there yourself and you're not exactly sure when that's going to happen. But by reframing your task in terms of input, simply write for 25 minutes, you know that no matter what you do, you can stop working after 25 minutes and that makes it much easier to get started. And the last main benefit here is having that piece of paper next to you to write down your distractions. And this is really, really important, not only because it lets you write down your distractions and get them out of your mind into a place that you trust, but it also helps to sever that connection between the craving for a distraction and the action you take to go get that distraction. And every time you do that, every time you deny your brain's craving for a distraction, you are building that focus muscle and better enabling yourself to resist distractions in the future, making you naturally more productive. Of course, I'm not satisfied to just tell you about the Pomodoro technique and leave it at that because like anything else, you can can optimize this technique and make it even more useful. And in this video, I've got three additional steps that you can take to make it work even better for you. First, see if you can combine the Pomodoro technique with other productivity tools and methods to make it even more effective. And the example I'll give you here is that I combine this technique with Cold Turkey Writer, which is an app that basically turns my computer into a typewriter that can do nothing else until I hit a word count goal. Now, one of the features of Cold Turkey Writer is that in addition to setting a word count goal, you can also set a time goal. So in effect, you could make it a Pomodoro app, and that is exactly what I do on a weekly basis. Secondly, feel free to experiment with the time intervals that 
that you use, because 25 minutes isn't some universal productivity constant burned into the human psyche forever, it's just what the creator of the technique used himself. For my part, I do use 25 minutes on the clock when I'm starting out, but I don't actually take a break after that 25 minutes is up. And the reason is that I use the Pomodoro technique to get over that initial mental hurdle to get into my work, but once I'm there, I'm in the flow state and I don't wanna stop after 25 minutes is up. It's just a starting technique for me. Finally, before you start a Pomodoro session, it can be useful to adopt a concept from the culinary world, which is called, and my French is terrible, so I need some help on this, mise en place. That's right, mise en place. And that basically means everything in its place. Now in kitchens, in the culinary world, that basically means that the chef needs to get out everything he needs to use before starting the meal. So all the food, all the ingredients, all the condiments, all the cooking utensils, everything. And this is really useful for you as well because if you get into a session and you're not prepared, that can disrupt your work. So make sure you have all of your tools out, all of your apps, all of your books, all of your resources, pens, pencils, and that distraction sheet next to you. But just as importantly, make sure that everything you don't need is put away. So close any distracting websites, any tabs you don't need, any programs, put your phone away, all that good stuff. All right, so to round this video out, I wanna point you to some timer apps that you can use because I'm sure that not all of you wanna use an actual physical kitchen timer to time your sessions. So if you're on a computer, my favorite app, which is free and open source, is called Tomighty, and it's on Mac and PC, and you'll find the link in the description down below. Now, a lot of you are probably gonna to wanna to use your phones instead, so, and this is different than what I've recommended in the past because it's new, the absolute best Pomodoro app that I have ever found is called Tide. It is free, it is one wonderfully designed, it has immersive mode, which basically means that if you exit the app during a session, it will fail that session. So it's kind of like helping you not use your phone as a distraction, kind of like that forest app. And it also includes ambient noise. Aside from those apps, another option is actually to use my study with me video that I recorded a couple of months ago. And that's actually just 25 minutes of me studying. So if you happen to want a study buddy and you don't have somebody nearby and you want a timer on the screen that's 25 minutes long, definitely check that out. You might also like this video over here, which will tell you more about the optimal work and break time cycles. And if you like this video, definitely give it a like to support this channel and subscribe right there if you haven't done so already. Lastly, if you wanna get a free copy of my book on earning better grades, check out that link right there and Thanks for watching.